In this video, you will learn how to access and interact with running Docker containers. To see what your containers are up to, you can always check the logs. Use Docker logs followed by the container ID or the container name. This command reveals everything your container has been writing to the standard input, output or error. For example, if you have a JavaScript application and you write console log or console error in your code, it will appear here. If you want to access a running container and interact with it, use docker exec. For instance, docker exec followed by the container name and ls will perform the list command inside your container's root directory and print out all files and directories. You would use this command, for example, to debug your container and get a better understanding of the file and folder structure inside. If you do not specify any options, Docker would execute this command with a one-time connection to the container. This means it would connect to the container, run the command, read the container output, close the connection to the container again and write the output to the shell of the host machine. If you want to establish a persistent connection, like a shell, you can do this with the following command docker exec dash dash dty dash dash interactive followed by the container id or container name and followed by the shell command. With this connection, you can run all commands directly in your container and use it to test or debug the container while it is running. The commands you can use here depend on the base image that you are using. For example, in my Alpine container, I could only use commands for packages that are already part of the Alpine image, as this is the base image for my container. This connection stays alive as long as this terminal is open or you exit the container with the exit command. When you do so, you stay in the same terminal, but you're now connected with the host machine again, just like an SSH connection to a server. And that's it. You're now able to access and interact with Docker containers. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video where I will show you how to persist data with Docker volumes. See you in the next one.